Buongiorno, my name is Stefano Vendrame and I'm here to introduce the science of nutrition to everyone who wishes to learn it. If you are willing to bear with my Italian accent, I really hope to pass on some of my enthusiasm for this fascinating science and a lot of useful information that you will be able to apply in everyday life to improve the quality of your diet and your health in general. You don't need any particular background to follow this free introductory course in human nutrition, just an open mind and enough motivation. But make no mistake, the goal of this course is not to give you a diet or my personal recipe for what you should or shouldn't eat. For that, you can just go to a bookstore and randomly pick any one book from the dieting shelf. Here, we are going to approach nutrition more seriously and comprehensively. We are going to learn the basics of the science of nutrition, so we can make our own choices. Nutrition is the science that links the food we eat to its effects on our body. How what we eat nourishes us, but also how it can promote our health and well-being and prevent disease. There really is a lot to be gained from learning and understanding nutrition. But the science of nutrition is not set in stone. It is a relatively new discipline, and it is a science in constant evolution. Many are the things we already know, but many remain to be discovered. There is a lot of research going on about food and nutrition, and new fascinating knowledge is generated every day. Sometimes we learn something new, some other times we are forced to reconsider our most firmly held beliefs, and oftentimes we are faced with apparently conflicting information. But in order to put new knowledge in the right perspective and make good use of what we'll discover in the future, first and foremost we need a good understanding of the basics and of the path that led us to where we stand now. This is the goal of this course. A lot is said about food and nutrition. You read about it in books and magazines, blogs and websites, you hear about it on television or from your family and friends. A lot of it is good science and useful information, but a lot of it is misleading, confusing, conflicting, or dead wrong. There are a lot of controversies and a lot of misconceptions about food and nutrition, a lot of fads and a lot of good science that unfortunately makes it to the media the wrong way, just adding to the confusion. Are GMOs good or bad? Do low-fat weight loss diet work better than low-carb? Are food additives dangerous? Should adults drink milk at all? Should all of us take a multivitamin supplement? These are all interesting debates on which scientists still have not reached a universal agreement. The discussion of these as well as hundreds of other controversies and fads that populate the world of nutrition will often go beyond the scope of this introductory course, in which we are going to cover just the basics of nutrition. But with the knowledge you acquire, at the end of this course, you will have all the necessary tools to critically evaluate the information you'll come across and to make informed choices. I am always amazed at how much most people want to learn about food and nutrition. They do want to make helpful changes to their diet. They are willing to make serious commitments, but they are overwhelmed by the information to which they are exposed. They end up thinking that eating a healthful diet is an exceedingly complicated task, requiring major changes to their habits, a lot of time and effort, and a lot of money too. Even worse, they are frustrated by the conflicting and contradictory information presented by books, medias, and so-called experts, to the point that they are not even sure if the changes they are willing to make are actually worth it, or useless, or maybe even detrimental. So many times I have read and heard reports discussing concepts that could be so clear and simple with just a minimal knowledge of basic nutrition, and yet they were presented in such a way that made them confusing and contradictory, frustrating readers, instead of encouraging them to make healthful changes to their diets. Let me reassure you right now, nutrition is much easier and less controversial than that. Food and nutrition is also one of those areas in which many of us have strong feelings, firmly made up minds and strong health beliefs, things we may have learned from our parents, from our teachers, from books or gurus we trust, personal trainers, friends and the like. When someone tries to confront us or challenge such beliefs, we tend to get skeptical, defensive or even upset. 
we lose the ability of being objective. We stubbornly cling onto our few certainties and we fight tooth and nail if someone tries to challenge them. But in doing so, we abandon science and turn our ideas into a faith, or worse, into extremism and fanaticism that are dangerous to our own health. We selectively remember the evidence that supports our idea and conveniently underestimate the evidence against. We trust persuasive anecdotes over statistical facts. We distort reality to fit our preconceptions. We we'll imagine conspiracies to hide what we have decided to be the truth, where in reality there only is our blind and stubborn prejudice. I'm not asking you to blindly believe everything I say, but to listen with an open mind, respect for everybody's ideas, and the willingness to examine the evidence without prejudice, even when your mind is already made up. Like a wise man once said, nobody learns what he thinks he already knows. In this course, we will cover all the topics of most introductory nutrition courses taught at colleges and universities. You will gain a general understanding of the science of nutrition, but also a perspective that will easily allow you to take it further, if you so wish, to more advanced studies such as sports nutrition, weight loss nutrition, life cycle nutrition, or clinical nutrition. More importantly, you will be able to apply the knowledge you acquire in this course in your everyday life to help you make better choices and promote your health. Although I will give you practical information and tips, do not expect me to tell you what you should or should eat, or worse, give you a list of foods to eat from Sunday to Saturday. The goal of this journey is to learn nutrition, not to give you a diet. I'll do a lot better than that. I'll give you the tools, all you need to know, so that you can make your own choices and know why you're making them. You don't need any particular knowledge of biology, chemistry, biochemistry, or physiology to follow this course, as I will keep any reference to background knowledge to a minimum. I'm not going to show you chemical structures or metabolic pathways, and the little math we are going to use does not go beyond simple operations of addition and multiplication. A basic understanding of the body's anatomy and physiology will help you better understand some concepts, but it's not required, and you will be able to follow me even without it. I would recommend, however, to follow the videos in their order, as they are not independent and new videos often build on knowledge from previous ones. For the same reason, I would also recommend you not to skip videos even when you think you're already familiar with a particular topic, as the title may be misleading and there may be more information inside that video than the title suggests. This course is structured in 10 different sections, each section composed of 5 to 15 videos, each video ranging between 5 and 20 minutes. In the first section of this course, we will introduce the science of nutrition and understand what it can do for us. We'll start familiarizing with foods and nutrients and look at them also from an evolutionary perspective. In the second section, we're going to study eating behavior. What are hunger and satiety and how do we regulate them, both biologically, psychologically, and socially? What drives our food choices? What eating behaviors are disordered? And how can we change eating behavior? Section 3 deals with the important concept of energy balance. We will learn the components of energy expenditure and how we can calculate energy requirements. What is a healthy weight? Why do people become obese? What are the requisites of an effective weight loss diet? In sections 4 through 6, we will explore the macronutrients. Section 4 deals with carbohydrates and fiber, section 5 with lipids, and section 6 with proteins. We will then move on to the micronutrients. In section 7, we will study the vitamins. In section 8, the minerals. In section 9, we will complete our study of nutritionally relevant food components by looking at water, alcohol, plant phytochemicals, and probiotics. We will also spend a few words on vegan diets. Finally, section 10 deals specifically with the role of nutrition in preventing chronic disease. We will discuss the relationship between diet, oxidative stress, inflammation, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. We will also look at two fascinating frontiers of nutrition, which are nutrigenomics and personalized nutrition. And finally, we'll try to frame nutrition in a more general biopsychosocial approach to health and well-being. Now that I've shown you the airplane view of the path we will follow together, let's fly back to where we took off and start walking through it step by step. I promise you, it's going to be a fascinating journey. Are you ready? Let's go!